Jar of Deviance. In any city, in any country, go to any store or shop where children's toys are sold. Enter alone and without any companions, or else there is no hope for you to ever possess what you seek. Approach one of the staff members. Make sure you have a cheerful smile on your face and ask to see the Holder of Deviance. If the staff member smiles back with a toothy grin, all hope is lost. You will be taken in among the other toys in his collection to be played with in unimaginably painful perverse ways for all eternity. If the staff member closes his eyes and turns so that his back faces you, you are one of the lucky ones. He will beckon for you to follow him. Make sure not to speak or make eye contact with anybody around you. If you do, there will be no chance left for your survival because they will know of your quest. The staff member will lead you to a door with a chain hanging from the doorknob. He will usher you through the door and then close it behind him, leaving you alone inside. There is no light in the room, and you will hear the soft sound of water dripping. After listening to the steady rhythm of the water for just over a minute, Call out into the darkness. But who is truly wrong? The dripping should cease, and a single bare light bulb should light in the center of the room, thus dimly illuminating your surroundings. If no light appears, the darkness will penetrate your soul, and you will slowly drown in the steadily dripping water. If the light bulb does light, the silhouette of a figure can be seen just out of range of the bulb's murky glow. Take two steps toward it, then stand still. Do not speak. The figure will step out into the dim light. It is a creature that is an exact replica of yourself, completely naked except for a black collar and leash around its neck. Do not be unnerved by the sight of yourself portrayed like this, for that will only lead to your demise. Keep a steady hand and ask the creature. What if I am right? Make sure that you look into its face as you speak. The creature will seat itself in the center of the room, its legs spread and its genitals swollen with unexpected arousal. You will hear distant footsteps coming ever closer as another figure approaches from the shadows. The features of this figure are never shown. It will always remain as a silhouette, no matter what light is cast upon it. The figure will take your reflection's leash and force it up onto its knees, then proceed to touch its body. You must stand there and watch as your reflection is pleasured by unseen hands. Do not look directly at the dark figure, or it will turn on you instead, but there will be no pleasure in store if it does. Your eyes must follow the dark hands and the expressions of ecstasy and shame on your reflection's face. After the silhouette is finished with its business, it will cast the doppelganger aside, turn towards you, and say in a soft voice without gender, Nobody can be right. All is wrong. All is immoral. The figure will retreat back into the darkness. Once you are sure that the figure is gone, walk over to the slumped creature and touch its forehead. It will look up at you with a sorrowful gaze and tears running silently down its cheeks. Make sure to look directly into its eyes. You will see all the immoralities and perversions of the world, 
and all that has been corrupted yet once held sacred. The creature will kiss your hand, then stand up. Do not fear the creature, for you know what is to come. The creature will then begin to pleasure you in more unearthly ways than ever thought possible. During this orgasmic bliss, your vision will fade to black and you will lose all consciousness. When you wake, you will be sprawled naked in the restroom of your dwelling. Where your doppelganger kissed your hand, there will be a faint bruise. This bruise will never fade and will always remind you of the shame you experienced in that dark room. The kiss is Object 359 of 538. It will protect you from emotion when it is called upon, but you will never feel another kiss like it, and never feel any shame like that which has been brought with it.